excuse me, I've got a real bad chest infection and just want to point out that I put my washing out and as I'm about to start this video, it's raining and to be honest with you, I can't even be bothered to go out and get the uh, washing while it's raining. So, I want to talk about wrestling again. I will be talking about some MMA stuff. Uh, guys, don't panic. I've got a video planned, especially for MMA people later tonight. But I want to talk about something in wrestling. I want to talk about a particular term that's been thrown around. And this is also in conjunction with a particular wrestler that a lot of people were talking about on YouTube. And the wrestler I'm talking about is Zack Ryder. And the term I'm talking about is New Talent Initiative. And when you think about it, they kind of go hand in hand. And <clears throat> one of the many complaints we've all had as fans is, why are they not pushing new talent? Why has the WWE not created new stars? And how many times have we, the fans, heard WWE brass say, oh, this is the year we... We, we make new stars. We're in the business of creating new faces and creating intriguing matchups for you, the fans. And every year they say that, but they never really kind of go that way. Now, I want to talk about something. This new talent initiative, this youth movement that they've decided to go with, and how truly successful has it been? Um, who have they truly created since they've been talking about this new talent initiative? as far back as 2008. When I think about it, they haven't really created enough people. Now, when I talk about stars, I'm not necessarily talking about main event world title guys. You do you do need some people that, that get there, but I'm also talking about other roles. When you go back and history has shown, the WWE in its most successful periods, they've had stars in the main event, they've had stars who were in the Intercontinental title, they had guys outside of that, they had comedy roles, they had tag teams, they had so many stars that their cards and their shows were so strong that, remember when Steve Austin messed up his neck and he had to take surgery and be off for a year, it didn't hurt the roster so much because they had created enough stars and focused on enough guys outside of the main event scene that it was only a slight dent in the roster and a slight dent in the product uh, quality in TV and things like that. But if something like that happens now, it's, it really hurts the show. I mean, the show is struggling. Look at SmackDown right now. Undertaker is injured, and he's probably going to retire, and that's really hurting SmackDown right now. And a part of that is because they haven't created stars. And one of the things that's always been interesting to me is the excuses and the reasons behind this. Now, I've heard people professional wrestlers, most namely Chris Jericho, and say, well, these guys don't know how to get over. And he might have a point if you base it on a territorial system, but that's another thing to talk about. He may have a point. But then again, what about the guys who do get over and who are creating opportunities for themselves and are not being pushed and are just, just not being given any kind of role? And that applies to someone like Zack Ryder because Zack Ryder as a person is is a person in the company that's not being pushed hard, is not like in any kind of feature programs at the moment, but he's gone off on YouTube, gone off on Twitter, made use of all this social networking, created himself a fan base to the point where <coughs> they're in his hometown and they don't use him, and the hometown audience are chanting, we want Ryder. And that's not the fucking 10 percenters as Bischoff will tell you. That's the whole audience they're chanting, we want Ryder. And I've watched a couple of shows of superstars where he's come out and gotten pretty good pops. And to me, if the guy is starting to develop a fan base, if the, the guy is starting to just show something, I think it's time that you make plans to do something with him. Now, I'm not going crazy and saying, oh, put the world title on him, because that's somewhat unrealistic. But build him. Give him a role. Give him five minute, a five-minute segment on Raw each week. Build his character on Raw. Give him some matches. Do something with him. Let him have a role. And... To me, it kind of shows the problem and this eternal struggle between fans and the company. The New Talent Initiative, to me, is lip service. And the New Talent Initiative, to me, is the company saying, we're going to push who we want to push, and you're going to cheer for them, and you're going to pay to see them, when really it should be who the fans want to see and doing something with the person the fans want to see. Because fans know what they want to spend their money on. Fans know 
what's going to interest them. Fans know what's going to draw them in. And when you force feed Sheamus, when you force feed Drew McIntyre, when you force feed guys who are not over in the slightest and go, ha ha, look, look, stars, stars, and then they get zero reaction, it kind of tells me there's, there's a problem within the company. And I could go even further. Um, and then when you look at the new talent initiative and the, the new stars being made, and you want to focus on the main event scene, there's a common trend. And I'm going to say some names. Jack Swagger, Miz, CM Punk. Now you're going to see where I'm going with this. I find that it would be a hell of a statement if, this new talent, this new guy that breaks into the main event scene is pushed and presented as competitive, as a guy that belongs in that upper rung and a guy that could dominate that upper rung and a guy that could easily be seen as a guy that could go on to face an Undertaker or a Triple H. And I find a huge problem now with this new talent initiative is when these new guys get into that spot, unfortunately, the company make that person look like they're out of their league or they book them as a fluke champion and they use the term fluke champion and to me if the company are saying that what image are you giving to the fans how are we supposed to buy into this guy and <clears throat> a thing i've noticed is this okay jack swagger is an example swagger debuted caught on a little bit and kind of got people's attention uh got traded to raw and they steal everybody did nothing on Raw for about a year, kind of became irrelevant. Then they were like, well, we'll remedy this. And they were going to book him on an unbeaten streak, but instead they had him lose for about four weeks and get destroyed by Cena. Then they do nothing with him in the beginning of 2010. And then they go, right, we'll throw money on the bank on him and then we'll put the belt on him. And to be honest with you, by the time they'd done it, it just it didn't have the same impact. When Edge won money in the bank, it had some impact because he'd been relevant for about... He'd been relevant within the company. When they did it with Van Damme, it was relevant. When they did it with Kennedy, as much as I'm not that keen on him, it was relevant. By the time they did it with Swagger, he was so irrelevant to the company that it was just indifference. And then he cashed it in, what, two days later? And it didn't really have the impact that it should have had. And then, as the reign progresses, it was just... To me, it looked like we'll, we'll throw a belt on the guy and we don't really have any plans, but we're going to make him look like he's out of his depth. And now, we fast forward to now, if I told you, a new fan, that he actually won the world title, you would have a hard time believing that. And then you look at someone like The Miz. Now, that always seems to get a lot of controversy because a lot of people will either really like him or really just dislike him. And I want to talk about when they put the belt on him. I think that he got them a lot of media attention and got them a lot of press attention when he won the belt. But the problem with the way that he was booked is, again, he was booked as weak, he was booked as irrelevant, he was booked as unimportant. And to prove the point, WrestleMania this year, I'm going to tell you what I was paying for, and I think nearly everyone else could tell me the same thing. I was paying to see The Rock. Uh, and John Cena get into some kind of confrontation. I wasn't really paying to see The Miz. And that's unfortunate, but that's exactly how they presented him. So because they presented him as irrelevant, insignificant, unimportant, the fans don't really give a shit. So when he comes out and he kind of gets a tepid reaction, well, they blame it on the wrestling. Go, oh, well, oh, he's not over. No, you actually have to think about how you're presenting, <coughs> excuse me, how you're presenting the guy to us on television. And... I mean, again, it, it's the same thing. I, I could go back, they did the same thing with Chris Jericho, they did the same thing with CM Punk. If you're in the business of making new stars and drawing money, surely you want to present guys as strong or believable in some way, shape or form. And a lot of guys will say, well, Miz was a Hill champion, they needed to present him like that. But the problem is, at the same token, look at how Del Rio has been booked and look at how Miz has been booked. Del Rio was probably booked as more of a force coming into the title reign as opposed to Miz, who eventually wins the belt and is booked as a fluke, joke, comedy champion. And that was just how he was booked. 
<coughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe I've talked so fast. Anyways, um, I now want to fast forward on to what the rumoured ideas and plans will be. And it's rumoured now that Del Rio will be the next guy for SummerSlam for John Cena. And again, is this going to be a case where a new guy comes in, gets over, gets some momentum, but is booked to look out of his depth and out of his place? Is that going to happen? Because if they do, they're, they're really hurting themselves more than they're hurting anybody else. And that's a shame. And to be honest with you, when you think about the new talent initiative, I think you make the biggest statement when you put a new guy, or a guy that you've brought up for the last two and a half to three years, uh, a young talent, that's gone over, that's appealing enough with the crowd, and you put him in the top match at WrestleMania, and he walks out the winner. It worked so many times before. It worked when they did it with Steve Austin. It worked when they did it with The Rock. It worked when they did it with Ultimate Warrior to an extent. It worked with Bret Hart. It's worked with a lot of guys. And that really kind of, you know, shoots them up there a little bit more. It worked with Shawn Michaels. And now they don't do that anymore. I mean, the opening match was for the world title. And I think, in a way, we already know for next year that WrestleMania, the two feature belts are going to be The Rock and John Cena and possibly Triple H and The Undertaker. So again, it tells me that at WrestleMania, you know, next year, the guys that are going to be spotlighted are not guys in this new talent initiative and not guys that are going to be billed as fresh main event stars. Instead, unfortunately, WrestleMania is going to be Veterans Night. And it's, it's a shame. It, it, it's a shame, unfortunately. And when guys do tend to get over, they, they don't really like it. And they don't, you know, they don't do anything. And if you want to draw a comparison to MMA, it's not hard. I will compare Zack Ryder to Jason Mayhem Miller. Jason Mayhem Miller has been out of the UFC for God knows how long. He created his star, built up his brand outside of the UFC. And then the UFC decided, we're going to capitalize on this. We're going to put him on the Ultimate Fighter opposing Michael Bisping. That's good money and that's smart business sense. WWE will not do the same thing and that makes me wonder, you know, what's going on with this new talent initiative. Is it just lip service? Anyways, I have talked enough and now I want to hear from everybody out there. I want to know what you think of the new talent initiative. What you think about WWE creating new stars. Have they created new stars? Are they doing enough to create new stars? Was there anything that I said in this video that you agree with or disagree with? I want to hear everything. I want to hear all what you have to say. If there are MMA fans that want to draw comparisons to this, you're more than welcome to do that. And uh, let me all know what you think. And I will probably be back ugh, later tonight. And yeah, have a good one and take care, guys.